My name is Andrea and I'm uh, part of the phone numbers team. So my goal today is to uh, show you some of the ways that Twilio helps you to go global. Um, going global, taking the application you've built on Twilio to new countries is really uh, a matter of pressing a few buttons in the UI, as we'll see uh, shortly. But uh, to be successful when you uh, go international, there's a few things that is good to know. And the first thing is having an understanding of phone numbers. So let's jump right in. So why are phone numbers important, or choosing the right phone number? Why is that important? Especially today when most of us use our mobile phones, which typically have uh, all-you-can-eat uh, data and voice plans. So why is it that um, having the right number is, is important? And the reason is that numbers are not just about reachability and access. Um, and probably a good way to see why phone numbers are important is to look at some of the main uh, use cases that Twilio is used for. So consider contact center. So ING uses Twilio to connect with their customers. What's important for them is that they are reachable. So allowing their customers to reach them at local call rates or free with toll-free numbers. They're interested in uh, being able to communicate over multiple channels, so they want numbers that can do both voice and SMS. If you look at another uh, common use case is mass number. So Uber uses us to anonymize communications between drivers and passengers. So there is about having large number pools, being using those in a flexible way. Typically, it would be mobile numbers that you'd want for this use case. And again, voice and SMS is important to be able to communicate using those two channels. And consider Nike, which uses Twilio for uh, marketing communications. Here, it's different use case, different type of number. So you'd expect a brand to be most important, so the ability to use alpha sender ID so that the brand name appears when a message arrives. We're talking about SMS-enabled numbers, and typically one-way use case kind of numbers. So these give you an idea about what a phone number gets you. Access is one, but also flexibility for different use cases and identity with presence uh, in a country with local numbers or also branding with alpha sender ID. Now we've seen some num uh, types of numbers mentioned there. Let's take a second to look at what kind of numbers you're able to get on the Twilio platform. Um, there's five types. The first is geographical or local numbers. These are numbers that um, are typically used by individuals or businesses. They map to a geographical area. So the prefix will indicate to the user that uh, the, the business is, is local. Um, Second type of number is toll-free numbers. These are typically used by businesses to be reached uh, free of charge. Next is mobile numbers. Um, in the US, there is no distinction between mobile numbers and local numbers in terms of prefix and range. But in most other countries, uh, mobile numbers will have a dedicated range which tells the caller that the call might cost more. National numbers uh, don't exist everywhere in the world, but in some countries, national numbers allow uh, callers to reach a number at the same rate regardless what part of the country they're calling from. It's not uh, as, uh, it's a stepping stone to toll free um, and also typically used by, uh, by businesses. And last, it's short codes. Short codes are uh, easy to remember because they're, uh, shorter in length. They, um, you have to apply for a short code and get approved, and they also incur a higher uh, monthly charge. Um, on the other hand, they're great for sending um, a lot of messages because they have capability of very high throughput. So how do you actually get phone numbers on the Twilio platform? There's three ways that you can uh, use programmable communications on Twilio. Um, uh, with, with phone numbers. The first way is to buy a number. And the way you do that is either through the console or the API. And in both, uh, through both interfaces, you're able to specify the type of capability uh, you want. And um, when you get a, a set of results, you're then able to 
pick the one you want and go through a different API endpoint to purchase it, or in the console, you go right there and, and click purchase. So let's just take a second and look at uh, how that actually works. So let's say that I have uh, my travel, uh, travel agent company called Signal Travel. I'm established in the UK. I bring uh, attendees to Signal. Um, and let's say that I want to expand. I see opportunity to bring my business to the US. So I want to add uh, a US number. What I would do is go to a buy a number uh, screen in the console. And let's say that I'm looking for a phone number in US and location, uh, I want a number maybe in Austin and I want this to be a voice number. So I run a search. And I should get a bunch of options for me to choose from. I simply hit buy and as soon as I've purchased the number, it gives me an option to configure it. If I click on set up number, I can go down to select the Twimmel that I'm using in my UK number, which simply has an IVR welcoming the user uh, to my business and asking them to make a selection. I can hit save, and that number is now active. So you're welcome to try and call this number on the screen, 643-5367, and should be able to hear this. Welcome to Signal Travel, to book a flight. Press 1 to hear our offers. Press 2 to... Sp so simply by applying the configuration that I had on my UK number to the US number, in a few clicks, I was able to uh, ramp that service in a completely new country. So let's look at what uh, kind of numbers I'm able to get through the uh, Twilio platform. So we have numbers in 70 countries around the world. Most of them are voice enabled, and a portion of them are SMS enabled numbers. Just that signal uh, today, uh, we announced uh, new numbers in three different categories. We spend a lot of time um, bringing to the platform toll free numbers, as there's a lot of demand for, especially call center use case, to be able to, be, uh, to offer toll free capability. So, um, we, uh, we launched 27 countries today. We also uh, promoted four voice countries, Chile, Colombia, Panama, and Thailand to beta. So these are now available through the console and API. And we brought 14 numbers to developer preview. Developer preview numbers are numbers that are assigned on demand. So you won't find these in console and API, but if you go to the URL on the screen, you can um, demand a phone number and that will be provisioned to your account and you can use it for testing before that goes to beta and becomes available in, uh, in console and API. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about um, how we source numbers and what's important when we uh, select numbers that we make available on the platform. So um, it all starts with uh, quality, quality of selection of uh, carriers that provide numbers that we offer on our platform. Um, it starts with our carrier relations uh, team that goes out and ensures that the uh, carriers we're working with provide us numbers that will stay in time. Um, we don't want, to, don't want the case where a number that you're using on your application uh, gets, uh, goes away from service. So we put a lot of time making sure that uh, those relationships are, are well established. When we identify numbers uh, that are good candidates, we put them through a rigorous testing cycle that will test all the capabilities of the numbers. Um, and when we're ready, we uh, make numbers available into developer preview, which we're talking about uh, earlier. 
after a testing period in developer preview, then numbers uh, become available in beta. Another thing we spend a lot of uh, resources in systems to make sure that the numbers we return to the platform that customers have released, that those numbers are clean before we assign them to another customer. So we have uh, a, a system that will detect or estimate the chance of unwanted traffic appearing in those numbers, and we keep those numbers out of service until we're certain that there's no unwanted traffic, at which point we put them back into service uh, into our inventory. So we talked about three different ways of getting numbers onto the Twilio platform. The second way is porting. So porting is important because uh, I may have a number that I've been using prior to uh, um, wanting to use Twilio, and I want to keep using that number. So in my example of Signal Travel, I might have been a travel agency for years in the UK, and I don't want my customers to um, lose that number. So I want to port that number into Twilio. And what happens here is the number actually gets transferred from the carrier that owns that number uh, to a carrier on the Twilio platform, and it becomes a, a, tw a Twilio phone number. We offer porting in 23 different countries around the world. And we also launched in developer preview um, last year a porting API, which is basically a programmatic way to initiate a porting request and stay connected uh, through, through webhooks through the process to make sure the, uh, the porting goes, goes through. If you want to access the developer preview, then just go to the phone numbers page on Twilio.com and you can find uh, a way to uh, request access to that uh, API. Another way of getting, uh, of using uh, programmable communications um, on a number that you already have is through hosting. And this is something we just released uh, at this signal. And it allows you to add SMS capability to US and Canada landline numbers and toll-free numbers. So hosting is different from porting because it doesn't require for the number to actually change uh, from one carrier to another. Number stays with the carrier you already have, but the SMS traffic for that number gets hosted onto the Twilio platform. So say you have a toll-free number or landline number you're using today uh, in your business, but you want to add SMS capability on top of that, that's where hosted numbers come in. And if you'd like to uh, try that out, then uh, this is the URL where you can find the uh, access to the developer preview for uh, hosted SMS. All right, so um, second area that I'd like to touch on um, is regulations. So the moment you start operating in a different country, then you'll be subject to the laws of, of that country. And it's, it's a very good idea to understand what that means. On the Twilio platform side, we do a number of things to help you be in compliance of, of those laws. And I'd like to show you a few things uh, in that area. So, with communications, one area that uh, is likely to be affected is privacy law. So you may be aware that uh, in, uh, in Europe there are laws that uh, uh, prevent the export of private data outside of the country. Uh, until uh, last year we had a framework called Safe Harbor that allowed data to be exported into the US that was invalidated by courts. And now there is something called uh, the Privacy Shield Framework. Uh, Twilio is signed up to Privacy Shield, so under that arrangement, you're able to handle uh, private uh, data that is on the Twilio platform um, without a problem. On top of that, um, if you want an alternative method to export data, we also offer model clauses. And model clauses spell out how data is handled and what provisions are in place for, uh, for exporting uh, private information. Another area in regulations is addresses and knowing your customer. We've, uh, if you're familiar with the Twilio platform, you'll, uh, you may have seen that some phone numbers require you to have an address on file in order to purchase a number. We're seeing a lot of uh, increased scrutiny in this area. Um, 
obviously concerns worldwide around uh, terrorism and uh, have prompted many regulators to start enforcing laws that um, might have been in place for some time. But now we actually have to make sure that we have um, data on file for users buying certain numbers. We're also rolling out address validation to make sure that the addresses that are provided into the Twilio platform are actual uh, real addresses. And the um, uh, goal is to have that on all countries that uh, eventually require an address. We make this as smooth as possible to the platform. So you're able to create an address through the console or through the API uh, prior to buying a number that uh, requires an address. And then the address stays on file into your account, on your account for, uh, for future uh, purchases. A new area uh, that is getting increased uh, scrutiny lately is around identity uh, verification. So not only having an address on file, but also knowing who the customer is. And we're seeing this, uh, this regulation most prominent in uh, Europe. Um, Germany, Poland, Belgium, and Italy have uh, laws that are either in place or will go in place very soon that require mobile phone numbers to be uh, identity verified. So we're working to build that capability into the platform. So just like you're able to create an address and store that on file on your account uh, to buy numbers, you'll be able to create an identity um, that, uh, that should match the end user of the number and use that for, uh, for purchasing numbers. Last area I'd like to talk about uh, is around features. So what functionality do you get through using the Twilio platform as you go uh, international? Um, and what features, what capabilities do we have to help you localize your application? So the first uh, is just by virtue of using Twilio as a platform, you get benefits from the super network. So super network has uh, different uh, characteristics uh, that show the benefits it brings. The first is the scalability and the resiliency you get just from the cloud architecture that we use. We're in three, 33 data centers in eight regions uh, worldwide, and this allows us to have low latency communications. So when a voice call uh, gets established between two endpoints, we're able to write, route the real-time data within regions optimally so that we reduce latency. And also, as your application needs to scale on top of the Twilio platform, it can, it can do that um, uh, very easily. Second is the breadth of interconnections that the, um, the Twilio platform has with local uh, telco networks. We have more than 30, 300 uh, carrier interconnections, and this is the overlay nature of a uh, super network. We're able to, through one API um, for voice, one API through SMS, is give you access to inbound and outbound uh, traffic for communications in, into these networks worldwide. And lastly, it's the software nature of, this, of the super network. So because this overlay network is a software layer, we're able to put in place at different places throughout this network uh, ways to measure the performance and optimize how traffic travels through the super network. And that lets us uh, be always uh, uh, monitoring and optimizing the quality uh, for communications you have on Twilio. Next, I'd like to talk about three uh, features that you can take advantage of when it comes to localizing the experience of your application when it goes global. And uh, to look at, three, uh, look at three features, going back to the use cases we talked about at the beginning, for contact center, one uh, feature that uh, you have access to is called multilingual text-to-speech. So in my example earlier, you saw a typical IVR experience. It was in English. It worked fine uh, as long as it was in UK and 
came into US. Um, but obviously, as I go into another country, say Italy, for example, then I like to be able to very quickly localize that app experience. So let's take a look at how I would do that um, with, uh, with signal travel. So let's take a look at the uh, Twimmel bin that I mapped to the phone number before. Uh, it's called Welcome IVR, and I can find it uh, if I go to the runtime section and go into the Twimmel bins. You can see the Welcome IVR Twimmel bin I have uh, live on, on those two numbers. So let's copy this one, which is in English, and let's go back and create a new one for my Italian phone number. So let's call it Welcome IVR Italian. And let's paste this in here and let's just make a few changes. So for each say verb, I want to say language equals IT. And let's copy that across all the say verbs. So this will uh, inform the uh, text-to-speech engine that I want to use Italian. And let's change the text um, let's just say that, to book a flight per prenotazioni premi uno. per le nostre offerte premi due. And lastly, okay, that should do it for now. Let's uh, create this Twimble bin. And let's apply it to uh, the number that I have on my account. So back to phone numbers. I have phone number here, it's my hometown. Let's go into the configuration and map it to the Italian uh, IVR and save this. Now let's try dialing that number. And it should be in Italian. There you go. So with a few, uh, few clicks and a few changes to my um, Twimmel, bin, Twimmel bin, I was able to localize that experience. And that's something that uh, can be done in uh, 26 different languages uh, through uh, multilingual text-to-speech. Next is the mass number use case we saw earlier. So here, um, Unicode SMS is something that we ensure works on numbers uh, across the Twilio platform. And this is something you get automatically just by virtue of using SMS on Twilio. We ensure that um, the Unicode character set is supported on SMSs uh, that go through our platform. So, if the language you're localizing to requires uh, special characters, then you're guaranteed for that message to arrive as it was intended. And Unicode pretty much covers 100% of written languages, so that ensures that uh, not only characters but also emoticons arrive uh, as you'd intended them. And lastly, for the mobile marketing use case, uh, there's a feature called GeoMatch, part of Copilot, that allows you to efficiently use a pool of numbers based on the recipient of messages. Uh, say, for example, I have uh, part of Signal Travel operating in UK, Italy, and US, and I have an SMS uh, that needs to go out to my customers. I can have phone numbers in those three countries, um, and Copilot GeoMatch will automatically select a number from the country of the recipient of the text messages. And I don't need to code into my application the logic to select which number to use. 
So that makes it very easy to build your application once and then scale globally just by taking advantage of um, Copilot. That's what I had for you today. Um, if I can leave you with uh, three things, I would say as you're considering how you expand uh, globally is take time to think about what a local identity might mean and how uh, you may choose a phone number based on that. Um, be aware of local laws and uh, take advantage of the functionality we've built to allow you to be in compliance when you go to new countries and also whenever you can think about localizing the experience of, uh, of, your, of your application and take advantage of uh, the features we provide to make that easy uh, and scalable for you. So thank you very much. Uh, happy to take questions at the back. And uh, thanks for coming. <laughs>